Ohio Unos Roadster or Mazda MX-5 fans or as I will always know it as the Miata. If you watched yesterday's video you would have learned that I received my very first free models from a company and that company is Micro Turbo. So this is the second model that they sent me and it's right up my alley because I used to own one of these and I actually had it painted this color like a metallic orange or a copper if you will. Look at that. That thing's already shining through the box. So I try to do a little research, you know, on the custom parts that they may or may not have modeled this off of, but we'll, we'll compare it to some photos here. So they have the new packaging, standardized, you know, crystal box kind of packaging. You can stack up a, on it with your other brands. Uh, it's a officially licensed product. This is a hologram. Maybe there's counterfeits or they're preventing counterfeiting. And it tells you the scale, the model number, and then what color, metallic orange. Alright, and it says pop-up headlights, like their MR2, 14 and up. Yeah, don't don't eat it, or you'll choke on it. This is not a lozenge, which of which I have, actually do have a lozenge in my face right now, because uh, I made the mistake of smoking a cigarette, reviewing my Xiaomi air purifier. <laughs> and I think I'm hacking up a lung right there because of that cigarette. And it's dry, it's winter time. Back here we have a little graphic. And then uh, these guys don't use a second, secondary piece of cardboard that you may or may not lose. So that reduces the uh, consumption of uh, paper. It's got the Roadster uh, logo. That's in Japan. You know, not a good idea to do this, but it doesn't just drop loose. So that's good. There's no tape. It's just a good friction fit. You can see these tabs here on the base. That's what's keeping the friction. It's good practice. As someone comment commented to open vertically like this in case the mirrors you know if you do it the other way you might tear a mirror off so great advice there I apologize for, for forgetting who gave that advice this has a little a pretty significant texturing to it to make it look like it's carbon fiber one thing I do find a little odd though is that it doesn't actually take credit for you know who made it unless you look at the bottom where it says micro turbo nor, nor does it actually tell you what the car is. So, it is on the bottom of the model, I know that. Um, so, one issue, uh, boy, I'm scared to do this, but I guess I have to do this because I owe Micro Turbo a full review. Uh, so, there's this antenna. Let us hope that I don't break that during this uh, review here, but I'm going to take this off the base. There's one screw here. Like a stain, stainless steel screw. I would also recommend you put tape on that later if you're going to stack these up so it doesn't scratch the box below it. Right, let's get these photos out of the way here. So these wheels, I think they're going for, are called Work Equip 40. So it's got these uh, four spokes with perimeter lug nuts. It must be like a two or three piece wheel. So that's what I think they're going for, for this, this wheel on this uh, casting. This is um, sort of a chin spoiler called by RSR Performance. And I kind of feel that's the closest match to that. Maybe it's not the same. Mm, maybe it's not. There's so many aftermarket parts for this car. Because it's inexpensive. And there's a lot of club racing around this first generation. Or probably all generations of MX-5s. Uh, this rear spoiler, this is just an eBay or AliExpress special, but it actually looks similar to this. It doesn't cross over the trunk line. And then I do think this diffuser might actually be a proper match. It's made by something called FS Performance Engineering, and it has this diffuser that's lower and more inset than the rear the middle part. And that actually is the way this one is. So, of course, I don't know if uh, that's what they're going for. All I know is uh, they were nice enough to entrust me to review these models, and they sent these out for free. All right, so looking at the paint, very cool. I mean, it just brings back memories of my car prior to some clown doing a left turn in front of me, and I T-boned the person. Uh, insurance was blaming him totally. The guy just shouldn't have made that turn at that time. He was trying to catch a red light. 
or he ran a red light, basically. All right, random story there, sorry. So the, the paint is really great. It's not a standard paint color by Mazda, but it's definitely a paint color I like. Very high me metallic flake, it seems. Almost looks like a hot rod. All right, there is a, this black dot here. I don't know if that's supposed to be a running light. I think maybe the Unos ones, yeah, they had like a yellow reflector, but this being a custom one, maybe it's just smoked out. It's just on the surface though, it's not raised, it's just a printed dot. The door handle here is molded, so there's like this key area and the finger pull tap thing, it's painted silver. The mirrors are separate, but they are rigid plastic, so keep that in mind. The, they do have a reflector, an actual working reflector. You can see the orange paint in it. Let me try to focus on it. See? It's pretty reflective. <laughs> Alright. Uh, yeah, so those wheels, let's get into this front one. Uh, so they do have these four recessed spokes, and then it's also got the four lug nuts that the original one had. And then it's got perimeter bolts, so I'm quite sure these are those work wheels. And this is nice, the uh, tire sidewall is old school style. It's ballooned out, it's rounded, it's not just a slab side. So it's mimicking a tire from the 90s. And then we have a, a clear, I mean, I'm sorry, a, a solid silver brake rotor, and then a red caliper clamping it. And uh, yeah, it doesn't spin with the wheel, so that's good. Let me zoom out for a second. That's impressive. I know a lot of you guys love that stuff. It's not really my bag, but very often when you have uh, models with disc brakes, it causes a lot of friction. You know, you know, there's not much space in between these parts, so somehow they engineered it where they have brakes that don't spin and yet the thing rolls quite well uh, it's really impressive so yeah it's up your alley model roller guys and gals so smoked out uh, reflector here black it should be orange on a stock vehicle this should be red on a stock vehicle but it's blacked out so it's custom ride it does seem like it's lowered too I think these literally might be small diameter wheels Granted, the first original Mia MX-5 did have small diameter wheels. Maybe it's an illusion, because it seems like there's side skirts here, which obviously is a, not on a standard car. Mm, interesting, all right. I'm gonna go to the bottom about the side skirt. Yeah, so there's going to be probably a standard looking one put up by this brand. Uh, based on the MR, MR2 that I reviewed, the first one had a bunch of holes in it and they future proofed it to put out the one I reviewed yesterday where they plugged those holes up with these aftermarket parts and so in this case it seems like we probably have the aftermarket version first or actually I think they have a Christmas version I don't know if that Christmas version has these parts on it or not if it doesn't you'll see a bunch of holes here alright screw it together and there's probably a screw back there but discovered by this diffuser this one is running racing slicks same with tires. It's interesting, I can't see any tabs holding the brake rotors in place, so it must be on the vertical wall here. Diffuser here, pretty thin streaks. It's like a textured plastic. Okay, different texture than here, it's just smooth. Oh, that antenna. All right. All right, this side here, brakes look uh, good. All right, uh, everything else looks good. I like the paint again. Zipping around to the front here. Oops, sorry, my camera's really low. So, really great turn turn signals here. They have striations. It's actually molded on the outside, these grooves. I can feel it with the pick. It seems like it's a smoked plastic. It's not opaque, I think it's just smoked. Hold on a sec, let me get the flashlight. One lumen. I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. Is it opaque? It's hard to tell if there's light bouncing around in there. hard to see on my screen. You'll have to decide for yourself. Hmm. Okay. 
I feel like light is getting in there. That's just me though. Could be totally wrong. Alright, so the badge here, that's a Unos badge, not a Mazda badge. That's why the box said Roadster, Roadster on it. And then, uh, well, we'll get to that in a moment. Oh, cool, there's an intercooler. So this must be a uh, turbo or supercharged uh, MX-5. And that's, this is, uh, I think, a photo etched piece of metal. Let's see if I can hold it this way without ruining that antennae. Get some light in there. I don't know if that's metal. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's plastic and just painted silver, but the ridges are really thin. Much thinner than the dental picks, so... Interesting. It's quite recessed, too. It's, yeah, it's kind of it's kind of in there. I don't know what's going on over here. Are there brake ducts? Mm, I feel like it's bottoming out against something there. What is this? Hmm. I don't know, but anyways, it's deep in there. Chin spoiler has that texture of the diffuser, it looks like. And that's definitely a separate piece, as we saw on the bottom. Alright, so... This has pop-up lights like the um, Hobby Japan, which we'll show later. And so that's what it looks like with the lights down from a top view. You'll have to decide if you, you like that or not. From the three-quarter view. Okay. Now for some animation time. So there's this lever here. What's up? What's up? So, it's a smooth action. And this one has enough friction. You don't seem to want to go down easily. I guess if you do that a bunch of times, eventually they'll go down. Yeah, it looks like it went nappy time a little bit. It's drowsy. If you want to keep it up, just tape it or put poster putty in there. Alright, I'll just leave it down for now. This side of the car is just an antenna, I guess. So that antenna is a piece of metal. It's just, I, I'm pretty sure it's awfully thin. Uh, let's see. I mean, it's, I don't know. It's not flexible. If it's plastic, it's going to snap easily. If it's metal, it'll bend easily, but you can probably bend it back. I'm not going to I'm not going to mess around with it. Fuel filler is in the right location. And then, uh, the paint, yeah, it's pretty nice. It's not it's not very orange peely. This is under magnification, so let me back out again. Just one to one. It looks very it looks decently smooth. It's not resin quality smooth, but it also doesn't cost as much as a resin either, so I think it's acceptable. So this rear wing here seems to be just uh, probably a piece of plastic painted glossy black. That's my fingerprint, not a carbon effect. And it's pretty nice, it's pretty thin. You still have red here, I think, painted for the third brake light. And then uh, the badging here in the back. Let me hit focus. Let me zoom in a little bit. Oh, I'm at four times magnification already. So this side it says Roadster, that side it says Uno, Uno, Unos, and that's the lock. So the taillights, we have clear lenses, and then we have silver here for the backup lights, orange here for the turn signals. Hmm. I'm wondering if that's correct. Yeah, I guess so. So I think this is all blacked out, but that's supposed to be red on the regular regular car looking at that last photograph I pulled up. Oh, I see. Look how far back the lights are. So you can't even see the light buckets right at this angle, but they eventually start to appear. So there's a lot of molded depth detail back there. You know, it's nice that they molded the light bulbs back there. No license plate, unfortunately. Just a spot there. Yeah, that's metallic orange. Very cool. And then the exhaust is uh, there, and it's uh, quite a tube. It's recessed there in the middle, so... I don't even know if there's paint in there. Probably not. It's just deep, so it looks black. I don't know if that's plastic or not. I guess it would have to be plastic, because it's literally like chamfered. It's almost like a cone. Alright. The diffuser from this side, yeah, decently thin plastic, no complaints there. It is an interesting diffuser, you know, how it sticks out so much here and not so much there. Mainly because, you know, the tires would be here and uh, blocking it, I guess. The 
the longer it is, the more suction it creates as uh, the air passes underneath. All right, uh, interior-wise, very nice. You know, it's not it's not a standard Mazda interior color scheme. They had tan, they had uh, black. Uh, those are the only two colors I remember. I had a tan one myself. So this black and white theme here, or actually it's more of a gray, I think. It's a gray. It's just this photo booth is so bright. And then this is nice. I'm already at four times magnification, so this actually has instrument gauges. The, the MR2s I have from this brand, they don't have any gauges. But I guess with a you know a open top, you kind of have to go that route. So that's nice. And uh, and then also you have the uh, HVAC and radio there. That's like a decal. Many colors there. You can see the rear view mirror. That is very shiny. That is literally a reflector again that pick there yeah. that shifter looks good ashtray e-brake yeah, some floor mat details even I wonder if there's actually gas pedal details hold on let me get a flashlight yeah they're molded in there it's part of the molding the clutch the brake and the you know, gas so that's pretty nice sorry it was really low and then we have this roll hoop. I couldn't figure out what they're going for with this roll hoop. There are many kinds that have this double hoop, but this has a very strong crossbar here. A lot of them don't have one at all. And then this is the bottom side of the, the canvas top. That's actually the handle that you use to flip the thing back, so that's actually quite accurate. Yeah. Door handle pull, armrest, yeah, that's pretty accurate to the real car from my recollection, yeah, even where the speaker was located, so very good. Uh, the windscreen here, we have uh, some sun visor details there, and then the blackout looks pretty nice. The wiper blades are molded in, raised, painted black, and then we have the little power bulge there. So, very, uh, very nice. I'm this, the majority of this review has been at four times magnification, which is, you know, what I do for the resin models. Yeah, so it's kind of unfair. But I, I don't really see any major defects. Uh, did you? I didn't, I didn't see any, actually. So that's pretty nice. Okay, let me get some other uh, MX-5s. So we got a triple throwdown comparison here. It's really a comparison between two, I would say. But the first one is by Mini GT. The second one is by Hobby Japan, and then today's subject matter. The Mini GT is in a different price range, and I think it's a fantastic model for the price because Mini GT went through the effort of making two different molds, one with the lights down like this, and one with the lights up. So all the panel gaps on this are very consistent, right? I mean, GT has the trademark rubbery mirrors, yeah, so I, I love that about them as well. Uh, the only gripe is they never tell you what the car is. It's very strange. They tell you who made it, but what is it? I don't know. Okay, I'm going to throw this out. Well, uh, should we leave it in there? Maybe we should for a little bit. At least we can see the. they all have clear light, light assemblies for the turn signals. The uh, air intake, they all seem to have it correct. It's like a smiley face kind of air intake. Uh, the Hobby Japan has somewhat of a rear view mirror. Mini G skipped it entirely, which is fine. Uh, this isn't, they all have the same stock mirrors. Yeah, these ovoid, like M&M kind of mirrors. M&M peanut mirrors. Go to the back. Try to get better light and angle here. It's kind of hard to see the red here because the car is red. But yeah, uh, this the backups are these little dots here can see the clear they all seem to have it correct the orange is the dots on the outside and the red is everything else but this one again being a custom is blacked out smoked out 
Uh, let's see, the Hobby Japan exhaust is much smaller, but it's black in the middle. Mini GT skipped the uh, paint tap, but it is molded. Just take a Sharpie tip there, and you can add that detail nice and quick. Again, different price range, so you can't be too critical for that. These two are kind of in the same field, but they're two different roadsters entirely, of course. So, Okay, so I'm going to remove this. It just has a black molded interior. Now these two, they have quite colorful interiors. Probably Japan was going for the, the tan leather, although I feel like this one is quite yellow. Um, you know, the brown steering wheel is nice, but this is too yellow in my opinion. Uh, and I don't know, I don't know if the backside of the roof has that or not. I had a tan top, I don't, I can't remember if it was tan on the inside. Uh, but Hobby Japan also has uh, instruments in the center console. They even went to have a wooden uh, shifter knob, so that's pretty nice of them. And they also have a license plate detail, which is nice. Okay. Naturally, the antenna here is a nice detail that is missing from there. Uh, this one does have the chrome metal pieces here that are on uh, the stock Miata. This one being a custom, I guess, just body color the thing. Uh, door handles are similar. This one does have raised reflectors or running lights there. This one again just has a smoked out dot. Uh, boy, does the Hobby Japan have brakes? I cannot recall. Maybe it doesn't because the wheels are so small. No, it does. You can see the tab for the brakes. So I'm sure there's just there's a brake system in there. It's just not much to see through those tiny openings. track gnarly gnarly kind of kind of weird treads actually they're just like dots they look like ice tires uh, you can remove that and open that up if you wanted to um, so I guess it's kind of a wash they both have great interiors a lot of details a lot of, a lot of different uh, colors and stuff like that so I think they're on par with each other the headlight pop-up details Let's first look at the, the gaps of those headlights. Could be similar. Because this is, you know, green, it just looks like it's darker. This is orange. But if you really look at it, I think the gaps are pretty much the same. And oddly, it seems like both of them have tighter uh, gaps on this side. This one looks a little bit bigger. Same with this one. Alright. They both have molded in windshield wiper blades. Yeah, so this is a custom color window frame. This one's body colored like it should be on the regular stock ones. Let me pop the lights up. Oh, one last thing. They both have foil uh, badges. They're really shiny, like foil sticker badges. All right, so the, how do you even get this up? Oh, wait a second. Uh, this doesn't have pop-up headlights. This just has these permanently fixed in place. Yeah, so they sell a version with the lights up, but you have to buy that model with the lights up. This didn't come with extra lights to swap out. All right, so yeah, that's an issue there. That's why like the Mini GT, they chose to do it uh, the other way. But Micro Turbo gives the option to run it both ways, right? I'm gonna display mine like this, so just looks normal that way and I didn't really talk about the detail of these headlights so we might as well do it now if I could focus on that thing see the striations yeah very nice so now this is back when lamps were halogen not LED so it had a big thick lens and there's a halogen light bulb back in there so very nice depth and detail you can actually see that you know the conical effect of how deep it's going back in there and it's actually painted black down here as well, so. Okay, very cool. Alright. That's it for the comparisons. Hold on. Yeah, one last time I forgot to bring out was this thing. This is by Konami. It's quite old. Uh, I don't... Did they date their models, Konami? They do not, so I have no idea how old this is. I swapped out the wheels as well with some Ano 64 wheels. 
and you can see the paint rash on this. You can see the mirrors are just molded in, kind of like a Hot Wheels. So, but I will give them credit, they have clear turn signals as well, and some really poorly fit clear tail lamps. Uh, one other criticism I do have for Mini GT is the size of the wheels. If you look at the diameter of these, that looks more like the photograph than those. Those look like oversized stock wheels. So it's kind of weird. This is really what it looks like, you know. The thing came with like 14 inch wheels, the, the first generation one. Okay, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure they're 14s. Maybe there's a 15 inch option. Alright, uh, let me get some other ones up here. Because, uh, I've seen those enough. Here's a Kyosho of the fourth generation. I believe that's the latest generation. That's a nice one. I added my own license plate. This is the third generation one. And this is, I think, a dealership model. There's nothing on it saying any sort of brand. It just says Mazda Roadster. And nothing on the bottom. So, But it has a little metal antenna. So, and then a very, very impressive uh, interior printing. I think that interior might be printed. I can't tell while it's spinning. A foil badge as well. Some, some, something on the license plate. So it's a great model. I think I bought it off AliExpress. If you want to get on that. I don't know if they're sold there anymore. Anyways. Uh, the last one I'm going to pull up is a, a resin model by YM Model and it's uh, a modified version of this last generation so that's got a crazy fancy base uh, like metallic raised lettering it's limited to 200 in this color you know i could actually stop this thing for a second because if you haven't seen this uh review i know a lot of you people must love opening hoods because otherwise why would everyone be making models with that I don't really may think again, but there's a turbocharged motor in there. And because the thing is made of plastic instead of metal on metal, uh, I think the panel gap is better than a die cast. Yeah, it's pretty tight actually. Let me give you guys a top view here. See? I mean, this is die cast, and then they have plastic lights in it that move. So if you move, you have to clear the paint from scratching itself. This is moving, but it's plastic and plastic, so you can have a much tighter tolerances uh, than die cast. So it's actually a, here; it's actually non-existent. The gap. There's a little bit of a gap here and a gap here. Anyway, so that's the advantages of plastic models detail <laughs> all right uh, that's enough rambling on there let me get this guy over on its stand I don't think in the real world you'd see too many uh, MX-5s on a car show stand like this but uh, I love this car you know and this one actually is the same color or very close to the color I had so I'm gonna do what I want so again, Micro Turbo, thank you for trusting me to review your models, for good or bad. I will say, in this case, I think it's quite good. Sorry, maybe this isn't going to work. It's just too heavy, this, this stand. Um, your, the nearest competition, I think, is, is the Hobby Japan. But in, if you buy the one with the lights up, then it makes a lot of sense. Uh, but with the lights down, it's just you're looking at these panel gaps for no reason. I mean, you're, this has panel gaps, but the lights actually move, so it kind of makes sense as to why they're there. Uh, but they are two to totally different vehicles. I mean, this is just original OEM. This is quite customized, so it'll be interesting if and when you release the original one. I guess you'd still be at an advantage because the lights will actually move instead of forcing people to buy two different models to do that. Um, did this even have brakes? That's one, yeah. Did I mention that? I did, sorry. It's been a longer review. It's been 30 minutes, so I already forgot. Uh, also, the antenna. 
that's something Hobby Japan seemed to have skipped. So I'm kind of critical about Hobby Japan very often sometimes, especially the ones with just plain black interiors. Uh, they're nice models. I just feel like the, for the price, Inno 64 does a much better job. The Inno 64 just pops in more parts and stuff. So in fact, this is actually more along the lines of an Inno 64 as far as the amount of parts and details go. Much better than this one. So call me biased if you will because I got a free model from uh, this brand, but that's the way I'm seeing it. You know, obviously guys, these are all luxury goods again. Spend your money where you feel like spending it. Whatever makes you happy, makes you happy. I'm going to go enjoy a steak now. Take care. Thanks for watching. See you in the next Mazda Miata review or perhaps the next Micro Turbo review.